Hello everyone, welcome to your next class and chapter. In this chapter, we're gonna be starting to introduce you to some coding logic. So you're gonna to start to uh, be able to build code that can change dynamically given uh, new events that are happening throughout its process. Uh, we're gonna learn about if statements basically as a result of that. We're gonna learn in this class specifically about um, a new data type called Booleans, which are really important for con if condition statements as well as um, a new set of operators called comparison operators. They're very simple. They're mostly like, you know, stuff that you've encountered in grade school. So it's not going to be that intimidating, guys, I promise. So uh, if statements are used in basically every coding language, they're very popular and powerful, and they allow your code to, uh, you know, do different things depending on what information is coming into it at any given point. So today you're going to learn about Booleans, what that data type actually looks like. It's super simple. Uh, we're also then going to do some basic comparison operations and learn about basic logic and uh, compare uh, how to make those comparison operators work in an if statement. So first off, what is a Boolean? A uh, Boolean is really, really simple. It's, it's just a state. It's just true or false. Those are the only two types of uh, Booleans that exist. Yes, no, true, false, zero, one. It's kind of like a, you know, a dichotomous operation. Um, but it really is more of a logic-based operation for true and false because uh, with comparison operators, how they work is that a comparison operator can, uh, can make a comparison between two things and evaluate whether or not uh, the statement is indeed true or false. So uh, comparison operators return a Boolean response of true and false. And if you see these symbols and think that they look familiar, at least the first two, it's because they are. That's the less than and greater than sign. Uh, and in Python, they're used exactly in the same way. It's used to compare whether something is less than or greater than an, um, uh, another. Naturally, uh, this, these comparison operators work for integers and floats but they don't work for strings. How is the string tree less than the, uh, you know, string of planet? Now you can maybe do a function or do execute a function like uh, checking the length of a string, which will return an integer that you can then make as a comparison, but strings can't be directly compared using the greater than less than comparison operators. The next two operations you see are a double equal sign and an exclamation point equal sign. And what these mean are um, is uh, two uh, items equal to each other or not equal to each other. You'll notice that it's a double equal sign because the single equal sign has been taken up by our assignment operator for variable types. Okay? And yeah, it does not equals is just the exclamation point equal sign and it's pretty self-explanatory. Is hello uh, equal to the? No. Uh, so that would return false. Uh, Boolean false is a comparison operation. Is hello equal to hello? Yes, it is, and that would return true. So lastly, an if statement is like a conditional logic that you can uh, ask. Um, basically, you can get Python to make an evaluation of a comparison, and if that evaluation returns as true using this if statement syntax, it will run additional code that won't run unless it's true. So it's kind of like a check and balance, like make sure that these parameters uh, are in fact what they are, and if they are, then do this extra thing. So if statements have to return true in order for the code to run underneath it. Now, how do we get this all to work? Well, let's go into our syntax section and see how we make if statements do what we want them to do. Okay, so here we are in our if statement or in our in our syntax section. The first two th four lines you're going to see are just like initializing some variables for us to do our comparison operators. So this is first integer, second integer. Uh, remember how we do the syntax for variables? We first label what our variable is going to be called. We then use the assignment operator, and then we pass into it the value that we want this variable to be equal to. And we also have two strings here that I want to show you a couple of things about. Uh, so first string, second string, and it's hello and bye. Now, this is something that you're not used to seeing. This is your first Boolean type. Remember that Boolean can either be true or false. It could be no other number. Um, remember that you can't assign um, the variable 
a variable to be called true or false because there are saved data types. So look at the syntax here. It's not wrapped in quotations, and it's also like a different color in my code editor. And that's because there are a handful of words that are preserved in Python that you're just not allowed to use. There are not many. You can virtually any other combination of letters and numbers can be used, except for like, you know, a couple dozen maximum, probably even less. Maybe like a dozen are saved. Um, so uh, you'll notice here though that true and false, capital T, capital F, that is how you assign a Boolean true and Boolean false to a variable. Okay, so next we're going to look really briefly at comparison operators here just to show you the, how these work. Um, so if you were to run this line in Python, uh, you're saying is fi first integer greater than 10? The, what do you think the response would be in Python? Remember that comparison operators have to return a Boolean true or false it would return true, obviously, right? Uh, what would um, our st string uh, comparison operation look like here? Now remember that I can't use greater than or equal to for strings, but we can use equal to, uh, uh, we can't use greater than or less than for, for strings, pardon me, but I can use equal to or does not equal to here, okay? And these have to return as a Boolean true or false in order to work. In this case, this is false. Um, the other two operation types we talked about were the less than and does not equal to. If you put in the same information here, uh, then you'll get the opposite. You'll get false and um, true. Because is this second string not equal to the first string? Yep. And is uh, fi less than 10? No, it's not. It's, it's uh, false. So you also notice that you can use, very, like you can compare one variable to just a random number. You can also do that between two numbers if you wanted, and you can do comparisons between two variables. That's what I wanted to show you in this section here and how these operators work. Lastly, let's look at the syntax of an if statement. So in order to create an if statement, it's really simple. First, what we have to do is write the word if. Then we have to introduce some sort of comparison operation or any other operation that will return true. Uh, and if it returns true, what we want to do is run the code underneath our if statement. When our, when our if statement is complete, we use these, this colon to determine, okay, there's nothing else that needs to be done here. Everything else that is going to run based on this conditional statement is going to occur underneath this line. And uh, this is where Python gets interesting, is that when you have a colon and you want everything that's running within this if statement to, uh, to occur, you, you indent your code after the colon. So everything that is indented after this if statement is going to run only if this if statement returns as true. So this is saying if our second integer does not equal our second string, print this phrase not the same. So if this was true, this shouldn't print. And if this like isn't if this statement was uh, not true, it shouldn't print. And if it was true, it should. Uh, in this case, 32, uh, 23 definitely doesn't equal the string by, so we would expect this to print. Okay, so that's the syntax of an if statement. This is um, how Booleans work. So this is important for your if statement, understanding how to get a Boolean to return true or false. And once it does, how your if statement can then return some kind of response. You learned about what Booleans are, uh, which are true and false response. And we, we, you know, we reinitialized a couple of variables that we uh, have been working on from previous lectures. Okay, so why don't we hop into Python now and uh, see what kind of responses we get from this. Okay, so remember right now I am in terminal. I'm uh, in terminal, I'm in my default uh, file directory, my, my tilde default directory. And in order to get to Python from bash, I'm in bash and not in command prompt because I'm on a Mac. We type in Python. And we know we're in Python because of these triple chevrons. So first things first, let's, re let's recall if we can do this. 
if we can set a variable to true. No, we can't because it's a keyword. So let's do our first Boolean. Let's just do FB and set that to true, see what happens. Okay, that indeed works. FI32 uh, FS uh, the string. Oh, what happened here? Oh, you see what happened, guys? I didn't say use an equal sign. Silly meme. Um, let's do another comparison there, and we should be good to go. Okay, so uh, first off, let's do a couple of operations. Is first integer less than second integer? You have Python returning a Boolean true or false, so that is indeed working as we expected. We can say is greater than or equal to here. Oops, it's the other way around. Um, First, you have to put the sign and then the equal to sign if you want that to work. So remember, that's another operation that I didn't really cover, but if you remember from grade school, um, if, if we did something like is 3 greater than 2, that's indeed true, but is 2 greater than 2, it's false. But if you have it equal to greater than, it's true. That's just a little trick with logic operators. Um, let's play with our string here. First string. Does first string equal... Uh, the string, it indeed does, but is first string equal uh, an integer? It doesn't. So uh, that's how our greater than or equal to sign and operations are working with that. Okay, it's indeed working as we expected. So now let's try and craft our first if statement. So first we have to go if. Now let's we have to make sure if we want our if statement to run that it has to it has to yield a boolean true response. So let's just use what we have above. If our first string does not equal our first integer, remember we have our if statement and then if our if command, and then we have our logical operation uh, that has to return true or false. If it returns false, this if code won't run additionally. But once we know that our statement is complete, we um, use the colon button, and now look at what happens. Python gives us triple dots, and that's saying Python understands that this statement uh, is, is still in process, that uh, in order for this to run, there needs to be additional code that runs underneath it, because it doesn't know what to do right now. If this equal, if this doesn't, if this is true, it doesn't know what to do next. So if, we're gonna tell it, we're gonna say, uh, does not equal, and see if this runs. It does, and it did indeed print does not equal. Let's try this again, but with equals to, and see if this op runs. Doesn't do anything. So see how this if statement, when it was return, when it returned true, it ran this next command. Now you can have as many lines indented as you want for this if statement. It can be extremely complicated, um, and it won't run unless this condition is met. And this is where coding starts to get really dynamic and powerful. So, um, with that in mind, guys, let's close up and recap what we've learned today. Um, so today you learned about what Boolean data types are, these true-false data types. You learned about what comparison operators are, uh, greater than, less than, even greater than or equal to, um, and also equal to and does not equal to. Uh, next, we're going to learn the next uh, kind of piece to an if statement, which is called an if-else statement. The else statement is going to handle things when they return false. So that way you have, you know, uh, multiple different conditions that can run dynamically in your code. Uh, thank you very much, guys, and see you next time.